Hello, and welcome to something I'm very, very excited about here today. We're going to be drawing Baby Yoda. I, I can't tell you how excited I was to see a picture of this online for the first time, and uh, apparently I'm not the only one. Baby Yoda has really kind of kind of captured the imagination uh, of, of a large public of people out there. Maybe just online, maybe otherwise, I don't know. But uh, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and although I haven't subscribed to Disney Plus yet keyword being yet. Uh, so I haven't seen that Mandalorian TV show. I gotta tell you, I saw pictures of Baby Yoda and instantly fell in love. Now, uh, that means like you gotta draw them. And I'll let you know, this is actually the first of a couple Baby Yoda videos that I'm gonna be doing. Uh, this is the first drawing that I did. I have a second one that I'm gonna be posting in just a little bit. And I have a third one I'm thinking about attempting. Uh, we'll see if that comes out or not. But, more to the point here, I've been made to understand that this isn't necessarily Yoda. Now, obviously, this is the uh, same species. It has a very uh, distinct look here. Uh, the ears, the, uh, the, 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 the green-blue skin obviously tells us this is something of a, of a Yoda-type species. Um, but I don't remember anything from the original Star Wars movies that tells us exactly what species Yoda is or even seen any more like him, uh, especially considering how old he was. Now, um... Again, my understanding here is that this is not literally Yoda, but obviously somebody from the same species. Although uh, they haven't named who this character is, the, the, the Mandalorian TV show is still relatively new. I think at the time that this picture is being posted, uh, they were maybe two, maybe three episodes into their series at this point. And again, instantaneously you see an image of Yoda and, and it captures the public uh, imagination and, and excitement as well. So Disney, hey, Hell of a job, man. I don't know what to tell you other than that. Now, um, real quick about the drawing. Uh, you may have noticed that for just a moment or so, uh, Yoda's eyes here kind of got bigger and small and kind of flashed back and forth for a little bit. Uh, this is really something that speaks to how we address youth. Now, we're not talking about anything real here because this is obviously a fantasy picture with a fantasy character that doesn't really exist. But if we speak just a moment here to to this idea that that, that uh, Yoda carries some human type characteristics like two eyes and a nose and a mouth and stuff like that, then we can draw some comparison. Now remember, subject matter here is baby Yoda. So how do we achieve youth when everything that we've known about Yoda up until this point has been very distinctly old? Um, Again, if we take this from a humanistic standpoint, uh, uh, how do we how do we address this from a human being type thing? If we're drawing or rendering human beings, children and, and, and adults and then older adults have very distinct features that help you kind of cheat this along if you're trying to, to draw it or paint it and, and get some semblance of a... Uh, uh, a recognition, so to speak. So uh, wrinkles are the, are probably the easiest thing to go to, right? Older people have wrinkles, crow's feet around the eyes, the, the, the laugh lines around the mouth, uh, potentially wrinkles on the forehead, depending on how advanced in age you are. And our older version of Yoda certainly has all this, along with the scraggly gray hairs and so on and so forth. But youth is really interesting because you don't have those markers. You don't really have uh, uh, wrinkles or, or even lines on the face very much to be able to kind of create those distinctions of age or even resemblance if you're trying to go for something that's like a, uh, uh, a portrait or, or something similar. Now, eyes are big. Um, and I mean that almost literally. Uh, uh, eyes are unique in the human body in the sense that uh, eyes never change their size for your entire life. You were born with the same size eye that you have when you get older and die. Uh, but the same can't be said for other facial features. So even though your eyes may stay the same size the entire time that you're alive, your nose starts out very small as an infant and then grows and continues to grow past puberty and into uh, late adulthood as well. So older people, generally speaking, tend to have very large noses and then infants very small little petite noses and again you can see this one our baby Yoda here. Ears uh, are going to be a little bit different for Yoda obviously but ears are another telltale sign of humans of age when babies again very small and much like the nose they never stop growing throughout your entire life. So as you reach adulthood uh, again generally speaking bigger ears especially bigger ear lobes uh, uh, on older people as well. And I won't even get into the hair that appears there. I think we'll uh, leave that one alone. 
But I tried to bring some of those ideas into Yoda. Obviously, there wasn't much I could do with the ears there, but obviously, small nose. Uh, small mouth is also very indicative as well. And, and, and let's just kind of be clear about what we're trying to talk about here. The, the eyes themselves are large, but only large by comparison. They don't change in size as you grow older, even though they may seem to get smaller as you get older because everything else gets bigger by comparison. So as the nose gets larger and the ears get larger and the mouth gets more definition and grows in size as well, then the eyes not changing at all just seem to shrink by comparison because everything else around it is getting larger. Uh, these are nothing more than optical illusions and these optical illusions, uh, if you're familiar with them and if you're aware of them, help you uh, make some good decisions when it comes to trying to create pictures that have a very distinct age factor involved there. Uh, sip and soup. Now this is the other thing that really kind of got me laughing when I saw these uh, images online. Baby Yoda in and of himself is absolutely adorable, no doubt about that. But Baby Yoda sip and soup just reminds me of those very, very popular memes with Kermit judgmentally sipping tea. And, and I have a feeling that we may see the internet erupt with a replacement of the Kermit memes and replacing them with the Baby Yoda sipping memes. Um, I'm looking forward to them. I, I uh, can't wait to see them. I'm sure there'll be a lot of fun and, 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 and hysterical as well. Uh... I, I don't know if you, uh, if you, if anybody out there is watching this that draws. If you're anything like me, one of my guilty pleasures is putting in the one little last spark of life into drawings. Sometimes I do it early, sometimes I do it later, but it is one of the most favorite elements that I have when I when I, when I uh, get into drawing, and that's again the spark of life. And what I mean by that is the highlight that goes into the eye. Uh, Yoda's eyes here are all pure black, and they look very flat as a result. And they're going to stay that way because I resist the temptation, at least up until the end, to put in those highlights. Because I, I, I kind of feel like once you put them in, th them in, that you're either done or you're close to done. And and again, it's 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 like that little cherry that's on top of the, uh, the, the sundae there. I like to kind of savor it for the end. Because I know it's coming, and but it also kind of speaks to that concept that you're finishing this thing up and, 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 and you've achieved the goal. So here's your reward, your cherry on top. Put in that little uh, highlight, that pure white that goes in the eye there, that gives you that little spark of life that really kind of sells this, uh, this idea that, that, that you've created something that, that is more than just a, a flat two-dimensional drawing. Obviously, it's more than the eyes that just do that. It's more than the highlight that just does that. I, I spent a lot of time on shadow here, and, and to a certain degree, light source, but also shadow, uh, more specifically, in trying to do the same thing. When I put in shadows, I do shadows in, in uh, value layers. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Now, um, I start off with kind of a mid-tone shadow, and you can see some evidence of that uh, in the uh, folds in his cloak. Uh, they're not really very dark. They're not bold blacks or anything like that. Um, and they're uh, bold in the sense that they're kind of hard line shadows. And then later I go in with a softer shadow, kind of a more airbrush type thing, but it's the darker shadow. That's my second layer of shadow. Think of it almost like uh, I'm putting in like kind of a mid shadow and then almost a dark black shadow uh, to, to kind of get in those really, really dark, deep areas where I'm really trying to kind of sell three dimensionality. And you'll see that there's some areas I'm trying to do that behind the soup bowl and the deep recesses of the uh, sleeve as the arm comes out of it and so on and so forth. Um, Hopefully that, that, that kind of explains how that's done. Uh, again, I, I might put in a third layer of shadow. I don't do it in this specific drawing, but occasionally I do a third layer and then maybe one or two layers of, of, of uh, brights or, or lights, if, if that's your preferred uh, terminology there. One light is usually a light that kind of matches the uh, color scheme that I'm going for, and then I usually try to put in something that's super, super bright, like a, almost pure white. Um, and you'll see the uh, pure whites kind of come in on uh, what might be uh, defined as rim lighting. If you're not familiar with rim lighting, rim lighting is another one of those things that really kind of cheat three-dimensionality creates helps you create the optical illusion you will see some room lighting in this particular piece it's going to show up on yoda's uh if you're facing him on his left arm and on the uh left side of his body for the most part uh, it's going to be pretty much pure white and it's going to be a very unusual kind of texture as well because everything in this doesn't have much of a texture it looks almost shiny um something i got to work on a little bit i think it's one of the uh kind of fallbacks of digital medium is that that unless you're really trying to get it in there texture doesn't come very easily whereas it does with things like more traditional paints and pencils and things like that. I did mimic something of a paint brush to put in those room lights that you'll see in a few minutes, and that's why it looks like it has texture when nothing else really does. But again, you know, this is all learning experience for me, and uh, as I experiment and as I uh, kind of work on some new pieces, I get other tools of this software involved in my uh, artwork, and, and, and I gotta tell you, in the last three months, just in three months, I've seen 
a massive improvement in my artwork. And I, and I really kind of attribute this a lot to the Procreate program and just digital uh, uh, painting in general. Now, uh, I mentioned Procreate by name. Procreate is how I'm doing all these videos and pretty much all the videos I'll be doing in the future as well. So let me just put it out there and just kind of state, just in case there's a question, Procreate doesn't sponsor this. Procreate doesn't pay me. Procreate wasn't free for me. This is something that I'm doing purely on my own and I'm speaking just to my own uh, uh, ideas, my own you know uh, passion for, for what this program has to offer. If, if anything, I really wish uh, Procreate would kind of come along and sponsor me because they got a new version of it coming out soon. And I cannot get my hands on and it seems like there's a bunch of people out there in YouTube land that already have beta versions of Procreate 5 and I would love to have it. I'd love to experiment with it but I guess I'm just not one of those people yet. Uh, so maybe one day but again I gotta tell you if you if you have the means Procreate really is an amazing program that will bring your artwork along by leaps and bounds not to mention the fact that you're not tied to a computer. So uh, uh, I'll let you know uh, uh, just a little personal uh, note about me here. This Baby Yoda drawing along with the Baby Yoda drawing that I, the second one that I'm going to be posting a little bit later were both done during a camping trip that I recently took. A camping trip that I was, re for the most part, off-grid for. Um, I did not really have much in terms of the uh, electricity. There wasn't really anything in terms of internet access or anything like that. So I'm home now as I finish up the editing on this video and getting ready to post this. But the drawing itself, done completely uh, out in the middle of the woods on a camping trip. One of the great things about Procreate and, of course, working on an iPad is the freedom to be able to do this wherever you kind of feel that inspiration. Background's going in now. That means this video is about to wrap up. So let me just take a moment here and remind you one more time, please to subscribe if you haven't done so already. It helps me out, even though it's free to you. If you ring the bell, you'll get notifications of new videos. And as always, thank you for spending the time with me. I really appreciate it, and I hope you got some enjoyment out of it as well. Take care.